Let's start with the bourse. We're okay. seeing a marginal gain today, but the likes of Standard Bank, Standard Chartered Bank and Diamond Trust Bank, they're all on the list of losers. Why? Yeah, exactly. The demand is a bit weak. I think we have seen since the beginning of the week, um, there's been not so much activity. In fact, uh, what you're looking for and the market is expecting to see what kind of results are yet, yet to come for the companies that end there in June. But uh, clearly, I think the much expectation that uh, the banks are going to spire the market didn't happen. Because I think most of the banks, their results are just moderate, uh, not very spectacular. Maybe when equity comes, then we can tell. But I think uh, because of that, uh, the demand has been very slow and um, there's not been anything so much peculiar in the market. Probably we're going to see the market still closing at 3,300 uh, flat by the end of the week. Well, what would you say is the market outlook for the second half of this year? No, I think uh, in the second half the market is going to go up. I think, uh, we, uh, as you have seen, um, though the results are not that um, uh, very, very good, but uh, they are quite modest. I think a couple of the banks did very well. I think 42% uh, growth in HFCK, 11%. Uh, in this other one, uh, uh, KCB, 4%. I, I think th this is quite good. So the, the whole impact of this one is going to be seen in the, in, in the last quarter. I think when institutional investors come in in a big demand. But I think uh, going forward, we should see the index closing at about you know, 3,750 or the 8,000, 4,000, if uh, the, the third quarter uh, seems to be good. Well, let's take a look at Treasury's plans to inject millions and billions of shillings into the economy to spur some growth. But what will be done about inflationary pressure? Um, okay, before the NPC made to revise the, 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 the CRR to 4.5 from 5%, I think one of the key issues that they looked at was the inflation. And it came down, I think, month on month from 19% um, to 17 and it has stuck at 17 and I think the overall um, annual inflation came down to about 4.5. So clearly, if you look at the month of, um, of June, um, uh, June and May, unless the second quarter, uh, inflation came down. And I think that's part of the reason why uh, the rates were cut. Um, there is no fear that there's going to be inflation arising from the uh, supply of cash. I think if inflation was to come, uh, which is likely to happen, it's going to happen from the side of the food prices being very high and food scarcity. And then secondly, probably the energy sector, we've seen already uh, the power sector is struggling. And I think uh, the prices of oil also as well is going up. So those are the key um, areas that are going to drive the inflation up. But it, it will not come from the side of um, uh, injection of capital from central bank. And how exactly will this money be injected into the economy? Uh, very simple. Um, for the last, um, uh, uh, I'll say like nine months, um, uh, the exchequer has not been able to spend. In fact, um, in the last, uh, this year's budget, I think it was made very clear that more than 250 billion was returned to the ministries uh, because they were not able to spend that money for the last financial year that ended on the 30th of um, June uh, this particular year. So that tells you the constraint in the capacity of the government ministries to spend. So I think uh, that being one factor. Going forward, I think uh, there's a new rule that has come, the Financial Management Act for Treasury which says clearly that uh, when the treasury gets cash, it has up to 90 days to start spending that, that money. If the money is not spent within those three months, then it has go back to, uh, uh, the, to, to, to parliament for them to be able to adjust those figures, particularly for the supplementary budget. So I think with this new financial management act coming in play, which came in play in this particular um, uh, uh, budget on the 12th of June, I think it's going to change things. So the money is going to come to the economy slowly by spending by the government infrastructure. And I think that one has already started. And then there's going to be those uh, couple of projects which the government has started picking in a couple of um, uh, different sectors. So when the money is spent in those sectors, then slowly the, the, the money is going to sink in the, in the economy. As much as the money being injected into the economy is going to spur growth, how sustainable is it going to be in the long run, though? I, I think it's sustainable. If, if I look at this one, you have to look at uh, 2003. 2003, when the government cut the CRR from 10 to, to, to 6%, it raised almost 20 billion at that time, which is a lot of money. And though the interest rates came down to about 1% uh, in October 2003, but later on that impact actually forced banks to start lending aggressively. Um, it forced um, uh, businesses to come up and borrowing went on an extent. And because of that, the credit expanded. Uh, the demand for goods and services also expanded. And um, we saw the ultimate uh, result of that particular um, reduction of cash ratio 
when the economy was growing at above 6% between 2006 and 2007. So I think this particular case, when the government goes spending, and particularly spending on infrastructure projects, not on the recurrent expenditure where they go paying those civil services, that is not going to make an impact. But if they go on the 18 billion and that money is spent on the roads, uh, particularly on the energy sector, which we are suffering right now, I think that money is going to be very useful to the government itself and also is going to come to the system systematically and banks are going to benefit also. And I think that's the one that is going to sustain the economy. And I think that's very sustainable. It's going to take a circle of three years before that circle is completed and another uh, kind of initiative had to be initiated from Central Bank. And just briefly before we go, what will the second quarter GDP figures look like? Um, the, the, the first quarter was about 3.9. We have not gotten the results for the uh, second, second quarter, but obviously it didn't seem like it did very, very well. Uh, probably we are looking about between 2.5 and 3%. I think going forward uh, for the average for the year should still be between just about 2%. I think one thing that's going to hit the Kenyan economy is going to be the um, energy sector, where um, already power rationing has come in. So obviously, a couple of production and industries are shutting down for a period of time before they can come back because of the power rationing. That's going to have a very, very big impact. Already, we have already seen the impact being affected in Safaricom. The Mpesa services are being interrupted, I think, countrywide, because people can't send and receive money because of various reasons here and there. So I think in the second quarter and the third quarter, which we're expecting the economy to do very well, it might be limited because of this uh, shortfall of the power and the energy sector. But still, we should be expecting something between 25 and 